welcome back to This Week in Film. Uh, it's the weekly podcast where we get together and talk about the movies we've seen over the past week. I'm Nick Panotto, and this week I'm joined by Midwest Matt Lauer. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> hey. Uh, how's it going, Matt? It's going pretty well. How are you, Nick? I'm good. I'm good. Um, well, just getting right into it. What have you seen this week, Matt? Uh, well, not quite in the last week, but pretty much in the last week. I saw A Quiet Place and Avengers Infinity War. Awesome. I haven't yeah. seen one of those movies. One of the, Which one is that? The one, <laughs> it's a, a Quiet Place <laughs> that I haven't seen. I see. Um, so I guess this is going to be a, a spoilery kind of talk. So we'll talk about a quiet place first and then we'll, we'll ruin affinity war for everyone. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, well, so actually, you know, with both of these movies, uh, one of the things I thought was interesting is the previews beforehand. Um, like, I don't know if you saw, have you seen a preview for a movie called upgrade? I have not. Uh, okay, so I, I didn't. There, this wasn't before Infinity War, but it was in front of the quiet, uh, quiet place, and it looks like sort of a dumb, fun movie. And throughout the preview, I was thinking, man, Tom Hardy's a really busy guy. He's got that Venom movie coming out, which looks and, and, just terrible. Oh man, does that preview not do anything at all for me? It's. Slightly, um, did you see the second preview? No, I've only seen the one where all you see is his head shaking, and that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, there's a second trailer that came out where where they actually show Venom, and it's yeah. Uh, oh, it does not look. It looks oh, it look good. It looks bad. That's too bad. Because that's pretty much all people want to see. I think is just to actually just see Venom. Yeah. Um. But so so I was watching this preview, and and I guess the it, the idea is. This guy gets a computer chip or something put in his head, and it kind of takes over and turns him into, like, a superhero, more or less. Yeah. Like, just like a super fighter. I don't know if he's supposed to be a particularly good guy or anything. And then at the end of the preview, like, once it was over, I, I, I was like, you know, that movie's probably a little bit of fun. It's really dumb looking. And that's strange because I think Tom Hardy usually picks pretty good things. And then I had this thought. I was like, wait a minute. There's an actor out there who looks a lot like Tom Hardy. And I think is like the we can't afford Tom Hardy guy. Oh, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Uh, yeah. The guy that was in name. like uh, Prometheus. Yeah. Yeah. That's who it is. <laughs> like I went through the whole preview <laughs> thinking it was it was Tom Hardy, and then uh, once I realized it was the other guy, I was like, "Oh, now it makes more sense." Okay, that's probably just a bad movie. Um, and I saw a preview for a movie called Hereditary, which is a pretty gruesome looking horror movie, uh, and I'm curious about that. But anyway, sorry, I, I digress. A Quiet Place um, is you know I can't remember the name of the guy. Do you do you know the the guy that's in it? John John or other? Krasinski. Yeah, he's in the office. Um, he is, he, he's, I guess, the lead. Um, and he he and his wife, uh, and Emily Blunt, plays her. Uh -huh. uh, and so the, the idea of the movie is that uh, there, there's been some sort of invasion of creatures. Um, and, and there's not much of an explanation behind that. But... They can sense people through sound. They're blind, but they can pick up on people through sound. It's like tremors, but above ground. Okay. Um, and and so this family has survived, and in part uh, because one of the characters is deaf, and one of the family members is deaf, and so they can speak with sign language. Um, you know, and it's one of those things that it, it seems like a little bit of a contrivance, but then again, it does sort of make sense, you know, like, oh yeah, people who have someone in the family who's deaf would be able to speak sign language and, you know, would be a little bit, a little bit more adapted to the situation. Um, and there are overall, there are some things this movie does really well. And then there are a lot of 
little stupid things. Um, it doesn't detract that much from the movie, I don't think. But but if you are someone who gets bothered by like characters doing things that doesn't that don't make sense, it might bug you a bit. Yeah. Um, for 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 me, when I was watching it, there were a, a, a handful of little like like decisions they made that I'm like, well, that, that seems a little weird. But I wasn't taken out enough to like think about it. But then later when I did, I was like, you know, that's actually really stupid. Um, and I won't throw them all out there and say what they all are because some of them would be kind of plot spoilers. Um, but I will say it's a it's a sufficiently creepy movie. It definitely gave me tension, you know, and, and I don't often I, I like feeling like I'm on the edge of my seat, but I don't often feel that way at the movies. Uh-huh. And And throughout this movie, I'll say like, I wasn't quite biting my nails, but I was feeling it. I I, I was feeling like tense throughout. Um, There's a little too much music for my taste, um, but the silences are used really well. And when you are, they kind of reveal, and it's, 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 you know, within the first two minutes of the movie, it's revealed that one of the characters is deaf and it kind of comes across because even though, the rest of the movie's pretty quiet. When you're seeing things sort of from her perspective, it's like dead silent. Um, and that's really, really effective. Yeah. Like when, when you're, when the, this character is like moving around and you can't hear anything, it, 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 you're sufficiently tuned into sound so that when that happens, it's very much like, like all she needs to do is turn and you're like, Oh my God, you're probably making so much noise right now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so it really works. Uh, but one of the things that are kind of dumb is that there are tons of sounds in the movie that based on the things that do, uh, get these creatures attention or the things that the family responds to as if it will get the creatures attention. Like, Oh no, we knocked over a cup. Ah, there are a ton of little things that should be heard or that they should be nervous about that just go by without any sort of attention. So, so there, it's kind of a conveniently, you know, conveniently um, reactive sort of thing. Okay. Um, It's also got lots of things that are like, if you're familiar with the idea of Chekhov's gun, um, where there's something planted early in the movie or early in a story oh, that yeah, if, yeah, if there's yeah. a, if there's a gun in the act one, it's got to be used in act three. Yeah. There are a lot of like foreshadowing things like that. And they're pretty obvious sort of stuff. Okay. Um, so, uh, all, all in all, um, I would say it's, it's a, it's a decent movie. It's very effective in terms of giving you sort of the experience, the, the tension. Um, I will throw this out there, though. I think it might actually be a better movie for watching at home than seeing in the theater. Partly because of the setting. You know, in the movie, you're pretty much... It's got a cast of, like, five. Yeah. Um, and the even though the layout's very confusing, um, you're, it all pretty much takes place on, like, a farmhouse uh, plot of land. And um, the uh, uh oh, something has happened. We've lost Midwest Matt. I'm gonna try to get him back. This is the sound of the phone dialing. It said FaceTime failure. Whatever shall we do? Here we go. It's ringing. Hello? Hello. <laughs> what What happened? I have no idea. That my iPad says uh, FaceTime failure, which I had never seen before. Oh. Well, did it happen before or after I lost my train of thought? Before. You were, oh, you were talking about something I don't remember anymore. <laughs> was I talking about the farmland? Uh, maybe a little bit before that. Uh, was I talking about 
how it was pretty effective. Yeah, sure. In tension and stuff. Okay. You were you were talking about how it's a better movie to see at home. Oh yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay, let me know when you're recording again. I haven't stopped. Oh, okay. Well then, <laughs> it's a very interesting conversation for the listeners. Um so yeah, so one of the reasons it might be great to watch at home is because it takes place uh in a pretty home like like setting. You know, it's it's a near a farmhouse, in the house, outside the house. And it, you know, in the theater that might take you out of that a bit. It, personally, the the one I the viewing that I saw, I think was the night that Avengers came out. Uh-huh. And um or no, maybe it wasn't Avengers, but it was some action movie and in all these quiet scenes of a quiet place, you could hear the movie next door. <laughs> so oh, okay. I'd say if you're in your own house, you don't have to worry about that sort of thing. I see what you're saying. Um, but yeah, you know, if, if you're just looking for something that's kind of tense and pretty simple, but more or less well put together, um, and with decent cinematography, I'll, I'll give them some credit. There were, there were some shots that I thought were really nice. Um, it's not so much my area of expertise, but, but it was enjoyable just to watch. Um, I'd say check it out. If if you can't get over the idea of someone delivering a baby in like three and a half minutes, you might want to skip it. Um, Cause yeah, that happens. Oh. And I mean, that's in the preview. So I, I hopefully that's not spoiling stuff for anybody because that's pretty much the preview, like her delivering a baby in a tub. Um, Spoiler my problem right. with the, well, <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna feel too bad about spoiling something that's in the preview. All I'm saying is it happens across the course of like three and a half minutes, and you know, you tell me, Nick. You, I, I don't have any babies, but were, did any of yours just like happen in three and a half minutes? No, the the first yeah, couple yeah. took place over many days. Yeah, and then the last two, which came at the same time, they they were they were in a matter of hours, but not yeah. but not minutes. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I it's, it, you know, something about that didn't seem quite right to me. <laughs> so, so yeah, some of the stuff's pretty unrealistic, but it's, it's a pretty solid recommend though. I'd, I'd say check it out. Okay. A quiet place. It definitely looks, it definitely looks good. And I'm actually in the middle of watching the office again. So I'm all up on John Krasinski. Oh, well, if you like him, then you'll probably enjoy the movie because he's on screen most of the time. Oh, okay. Um, well, then that brings us to the big movie of the week, uh, Avengers Affinity War. Yes. That, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> oh, you can hear that? Yeah. Yeah, somebody's car is getting broken into. Oh. It sucks for them. It sounds like a fire alarm. No, nah, that's just a horn. Good, it stopped. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, Avengers if in Infinity War. Infinity War, not Affinity War. <laughs> Even Affinity for War. <laughs> uh, so, what would you think? Off the, do you want to do like a, a like a non spoil section, or do you want to just yeah, jump right into everything? Let's do that. Yeah, we'll just okay. kind of go over thoughts and feelings, and then we'll do a little deeper dive. Cool. Um, I loved it. I thought it was great. Okay, so that the <laughs> those section. are your thoughts and feelings. <laughs> um, <laughs> the feeling was love, and the thought was it was great. Yeah. Uh, I I have I went into it not excited at all. Um, you know, really wasn't expecting much out of Thanos. Um, and I enjoyed pretty much the entire movie. Uh, I would say it's a it's a ton of action. It's it, there's not a lot of time for things to really develop throughout, right. but it's it's very enjoyable still. And what I thought would be the the worst part of it, you know, how Thanos plays out, I actually thought was really interesting. So yeah. so without spoiling anything, I think that's good enough to say, you know, go see it. If you love Avengers, you'll totally enjoy it. I I, I can't imagine that you wouldn't. And if you've watched enough of the movies to be familiar with the characters and you're interested at all in seeing it, I would imagine it would 
it would be something pretty enjoyable because it's it's pretty different from the other movies. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a movie that doesn't take. Uh, what am I trying to say? It's a movie that 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 totally knows that movies came before and it doesn't bother trying to set up anything. Um, and the, like, it doesn't rehash anything. Like you have to go into it knowing what's happened in the past, um, yeah. for, for, yeah. for much of it to make sense. There, you're not getting any backstories in it. Yeah. There you go. That's, that's what I was looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no backstory. There's no, uh, exposition. I mean, the movie, uh, the movie starts with the very first shot of the movie is the very last frame from Thor Ragnarok. Oh yeah. And, uh, and it just, and it just goes from there and it it starts off running and it doesn't slow down. No, it really doesn't. In, In fact, some, I would say that like, I mean, we are living in an age where movies are long kind of all together, uh-huh. but, you know, more movies than not seem to be two and a half hours. Um, but I, I felt like it, it ended up not exactly being poorly paced, but being a bit rushed. Like, I feel like I, I actually would have been willing to sit in the seat for another hour if they wanted yeah. to flesh stuff out a bit more. Yeah, I agree. Um, you, you could tell like when the, when they're, when certain characters are teaming up with other characters that, that, that they're like, all right, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta go. We gotta go now. Mm. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, um, and and uh, again, you know, spoiler free for anyone who, I mean, first of all, let's let's admit, like, pretty much everyone in the world has already seen this movie. Um, but you know, for anyone who's kind of on the fence because they're not thinking that this. Collab like like collage of twenty some characters can be balanced. I, I would say it actually does a pretty good job of balancing them out and and mixing them up in a in a way that works. It's not as though the Guardians of the Galaxy have their scenes and you know the the people on Earth have their scenes and it's just like that. They actually get mixed up in a way that really I think works out really well. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Reco- a solid recommend from from both of us. Yeah, solid recommend. All right, so now let's get On into the spoilers. Let's get into spoilers. So if you haven't yeah, seen it yeah. you, and you want to, we're about to ruin it for you. <laughs> um, what did you think was the most impactful moment of the movie? You know, I think I think that in and of itself is a pretty interesting question for kind of the overall thing. Like I walked away from this movie wishing that that was literally the end. Like I, I, I I would have enjoyed a longer movie that let things be fleshed out and then just ended the way it did because no, uh, yes, because I expect the next movie to just undo everything. Right. And, and that's fine. I can kind of take this movie on its own and, like just pretend in my head <laughs> that, that it ends there. Sure. Um, but it would just, you know, I, I, I understand it would be pretty strange to do that, you know, just have everything end with the heroes losing and, and here they're having it both ways. Cause the next movie will fix everything. I'm sure. Uh huh. But it was pretty cool. You know, it was pretty cool to see things not work out. And, and you know, even though I know Spider-Man will be back, it, at the same time, just watching him die and be like, "I don't want to die," was yeah. uh, it was, was pretty great. It was heart wrenching, almost. Yeah, yeah, and and I ended up really enjoying Thanos. And when at the end, you know, sure, he's a he's he's approaching things in a very sociopathic, cold and calculated kind of way. Yeah. Um, but he's got some sort of solution to, I mean, I don't understand how it's a long-term solution because pr- uh, presumably people will continue to appropriate and the population will grow anyway. Right. Um, but so just, it's just to, um, to s- go ahead. Just to be clear, if you haven't seen the movie and you want to know what we're talking about, Thanos's goal was to eliminate half of the universe's population. 
Yeah, because because they're kind of outgrowing their resources and stuff, and he's seen it destroy people and destroy cultures and stuff. Right, and his home planet. So yeah, and and so at the end, once he's succeeded, um, and he's kind of like sitting down and watching the sunrise or sunset. Yeah, I was kind of like, man, that would just be such an interesting way to end this movie, and and kind of. Especially given how much these superhero movies, I guess especially Marvel, have impacted the way movies are, I would really like, I mean, this is pretty meta, but I would really like for such a huge franchise to do something that breaks the system that much. That we could go to other movies and say, hey, I don't know where this is going to go, because a successful a successful franchise really broke the rules and movies can do that now yeah you know but i i i also understand that's pretty unrealistic so so anyway so as far as like impact goes i'd say um within that idea it's probably spider-man's death um and and that might that might be the top one for me yeah, the Spider-Man dying was was think? pretty traumatic. But for me, the most impactful moment is, uh, like you were saying, when Thanos sits down at his house and he watches the sunrise and he has that smile on his face mm-hmm. where you're like, oh, my God, he really got everything he wanted. Yeah, it was a, it was a nice moment. He um, And for a character that was completely CGI, I, I, t- completely, I would keep forgetting through the movie that there's not really... That's that. That's not really a guy. Like it's a total computer-generated image. Uh, you know, I I, I kind of was half and half on that. There were some. Moments, I I do think they did a really good job with the expression, like the 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 what do you call it? motion capture. Yeah, m- must have been really great because there were expressions that really came across. But there were textures and things that here and there, pardon me, would would take me out of it. Where I'm like, what? What's going on here why did he look so real mm-hmm. a second ago and, and look kind of like like when he was strangling um thor's brother yeah like his hand didn't actually go around his neck and so that was weird and so things like that would seem a little strange huh yeah, i'd have to see it again to uh see that <laughs> <laughs> well and 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 i guess like with mark ruffalo sometimes in the uh what's it called the the hulk smasher the hulk the buster hulk. suit yeah there were something about that like looked a little strange um at times to me yeah i mean it's a movie that um christ what am i trying to say it's a movie that had 10 years of build up to it and i feel like it it answered or it, it totally lived up to uh to the hype well and it exceeded what i expected yeah because i i really wasn't expecting well you much. never even saw the second one did you no i didn't bother yeah it's not that bad I've, I've seen with the exception of ant-man and the second thor movie i've seen all of them so I, See, I, I like I, the second Thor movie. Everybody hates it, but I like it. I, you know, I, I just didn't like the first one, so I didn't bother with the second one. Yeah, I went and saw the third one because in the preview, I thought, wow, that looks like it would be fun to at least watch with my eyes, you know. Uh-huh. And it ended up being a lot of fun. And actually, I think that that probably had me more invested in this movie than I would have expected. Like when Thor was on the screen, I was like, yeah, okay. I really like this guy. Let's, you know, let's get some more of him interacting with these folks. Yeah. And even Thor's Thor's storyline where he's trying to get his new hammer, which, which normally would be the, the part of the movie where you're like, all right, let's go. I, I don't care about this, this part. Even mm-hmm. it was, even it was very compelling and I wanted to know what was going to happen. Well, and it's one of the few things that did give you a little like, a little downtime to, you know, where there's not just nonstop action numbing you out. Right. Um, I got to say though, I, the, the Peter Dinklage character, (laughs) (laughs) I, I got, I don't dislike Peter Dinklage, but I think he's really overrated. Like, I don't think he's a very good actor, mostly because his voice, he's always doing some sort of stupid accent that sounds stupid. (laughs) Um, 
My favorite Peter Dinklage performance is the Doritos commercial. <laughs> Where he's doing the Busta Rhymes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I but I, I, I want to like him because I feel like I like the guy. I just don't like any of his performances. And, and this movie was no different. I was like, this is still him uh, sounding weird. Sounding like kind of like when someone tries to have a deep voice, which happens in this movie where the one guy's trying to sound... Chris Pratt's doing a Thor impression, more or less. <laughs> and that's funny. But Peter Dinklage always sounds like he's trying to sound British or something, and it just doesn't work, for, mm. at least not for me. I guess it works for a lot of people. But. See, I, I thought his voice sounded weird, but I figured it was because they digitally altered it because they, you know, he's supposed to be like 10 feet tall, so they made his voice deeper. Uh, I, I Maybe. Uh, I guess it could have been that. Um, Although I don't think that tweaking the the tone really changes your accent, so yeah. I, I won't give him that. I won't give him the benefit of the doubt on the accent. Okay. Um, but but yeah, I didn't mind that story either. And you know, Groot sacrificing his arm for the hammer thing—that was cool. It was cool, and you know, it's okay gonna, his arm grows back. Oh well, yeah, yeah. It's not a eternal sacrifice. Yeah. I love the um the moment with Groot and Captain America where he's like, I am Groot. And Captain America goes, I'm Steve Rogers. I am Steve Rogers. Hello. <laughs> yeah, and it's just I, that's another character I didn't expect to get invested in, but I will say over time I've gotten more and more like, All right, I like this Captain America guy. Yeah. He's he's a solid character. He, he you really understand what he's what he's all about. Mm -hmm. Um we're my wife and I were watching Civil War again the other night, and um, it's the first time I've watched like sat down to watch the whole thing since I saw it in theaters. Yeah, and and that's a solid movie. It's it's really good. I I've I saw that in the theater, and then I watched it again a couple months later. I think it popped up on like HBO or, or Netflix or something. Uh -huh. Um, and and I enjoyed it the second time too. I was like, yeah, this is pretty. Like, if I were to buy some of these movies and put them on a shelf, I certainly wouldn't buy them all. Um, but Civil War is definitely one I would get. Yeah. I would get this one. I'd get Ragnarok, and I think I do have the first Iron Man. I wouldn't touch any other Iron Man stuff though. I gotta say, like, even in this movie, I'm like, Tony Stark is the worst part of the MCU. Oh, you think uh, so? It, not in the first Iron Man, but he's just gotten so impatient mm -hmm. like he, he he was really cocky but then he just got to the point where i'm like you know he i guess he's supposed to be a dick so it's not really like they're messing up but i'm not finding him very likable i enjoyed him a lot in the first iron man and he was kind of just full of himself but since then he's he just always seems like he's having a hissy fit mm. which is how i felt with civil war i felt like he was the the downside of that too where i was like they i wish they would have uh edited his lines one more round because it, it ends up seeming kind of over the top yeah um i liked i i did like him his interactions or, uh, well i like the other side of his interactions with um dr strange yeah the two kind of egos bumping into each other was interesting yeah yeah i agree with that and and maybe because i i liked dr strange more in those interactions um actually i think i liked him more in those interactions than i liked him in the doctor strange movie uh it was interesting to see him kind of be a little bit more reasonable and mature but then also concede that tony stark was right about the idea of like let's have this battle here rather than going back to earth and destroying home right yeah, I thought that was that was kind of an interesting moment. And I'm sorry, I shouldn't say Tony Stark's the worst part because Bucky Barnes is the worst part of everything in the MCU. <laughs> really? You think so? He's Why got, does he exist? He I has just, such beautiful hair. <laughs> I, I just could not care less about that character than I do. Oh, see, I like Bucky. Really? Yeah. Like the well, the, it him? probably doesn't hurt that the Winter Winter Soldier is my favorite movie from the MCU. Okay, and and we're watching Civil War the other night, like I said, and and Bucky's there, and they're like fighting together instead of e against each other. I'm like, but one thing my wife did ask, she's like, "What is Bucky's? What are Bucky's powers?" 
<laughs> oh, yeah. And I was like, I he's don't. Got metal arm. I don't know. He's got the metal arm. Maybe he's a super soldier too, but uh, I don't know. I think that's the idea. I think that it's like he, he and Steve Rogers and like nineteen other dudes were were created. Well, that's why to be like that. That's why Bucky kills sure. Iron Man's father was to get the super soldier blood, right? That's, uh, that I don't remember. See, we didn't finish watching the movie, <laughs> so I don't really remember. My, my uh, wife and I have made it halfway through Logan and Civil War in the past week. We forgot we didn't finish Logan the other oh. one. And but you have, did you, you've already seen Logan though, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Logan was great. Just watch. I'm surprised you were wa- willing to watch it again. Uh, it's definitely different the second time. Well, well, Jill had never seen it, so I was like, let's watch Logan. Fair enough. And then we watched, we also watched Wonder Woman again. And Oh, nice. Have you seen it more than once? Yeah, yeah, I have. It does not hold up as well on a second watch. I, I remember half the- agree. I think the third act doesn't hold up. Um, you know, the, the parts about the third act that we even made fun of the first time uh-huh. or worse on second and third watchings. But I yeah. feel like I could sit down and watch the first two acts and totally enjoy it. And then, you know, start shredding papers or doing my taxes or something during the third act. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely doesn't hold up as well uh, as a whole on a, on a multiple rewatch, but I still enjoyed it. And my wife, my wife was like, this isn't super great. Like I thought it was going to be wonderful. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> well, it, you know, she's she's seeing it now. Maybe if she had seen it when it came out after yeah. a long list of crappy movies yeah. coming out, maybe uh it, well, you know what? Maybe like the Lady in the Water effect. You guys should watch Batman versus Superman. <laughs> right. Yeah. Then Wonder Woman. <laughs> that's that's what we did. We watched Justice League and then we watched Wonder Woman. So Oh, well I'm surprised it didn't just knock her socks off. <laughs> yeah. Um But coming back to Infinity War. Oh right. Uh, yeah. I okay, actually, you know, I realized I d I didn't see the I also didn't see the third Iron Man, nor do I care to. Oh um, man, I really like the third Iron Man. I know, and I hear a lot of people say that they like it a lot more than they did when they first saw it. Yeah, um, I completely so, agree with that. It, well, and and I, I gather from anything that I've heard that you know there's some sort of plot line there of him having lots of suits that are doing stuff. Um, like Tony Stark makes a ton of suits and uh, yada yada yada. But I gotta say, like especially when I'm seeing like Black Widow fight, I'm just thinking, you know. I feel like since Iron Man's just a regular dude in a uniform that seems to protect him from like everything, uh-huh. especially considering he's the only person that can make Thanos bleed. Um, it would be re- like if I were an Avenger, I'd be like, "Hey, Stark, <laughs> how about I get one of those suits? Yeah, because you've got one, and for a while you gave Don Cheadle one." Uh, you know, because Don Cheadle plays himself. Right. Uh, <laughs> Don Cheadle as Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle. <laughs> um, uh, if I were Black plays Widow. Dan Cheadle. <laughs> if I were Black Widow, or if, if uh, the Arrow guy had even been in this movie, um, I'd be like, hey, Tony Stark, hook me up with a suit. That said, Black Widow, what the heck? Because I feel like she gets into fights with some people who have superpowers. And I'm watching them fight, and I'm watching her block their attacks. Uh-huh. And then, like, at some point, you know, there's that thing where, like, the weapons clash, and they're, like, pressing against each other. And I'm like, wait, she doesn't have superpowers. Right. Why are they acting like she's bringing anything to the table? She's a good fighter. Yeah. She's good that, at the fighting. <laughs> that, it, it didn't work for me. <laughs> it wasn't fine. It, um. I don't know. What about you? What like what highlights? Things that that did bug you a bit? What? Uh, let's see. Highlights would be um, boy, the whole movie. Uh, uh, let's see. I really liked. I really liked the uh, the Thanos stuff. Like when Thanos um, has to kill Gamora. Mm-hmm. That was very powerful. Like because you, you in that in that moment you found out like. 
he does love his children. Like they're called the children of Thanos, but it's not like some weird cult. Like he loved Gamora Mm -hmm. and she betrayed him and he still was hesitant to throw her off the cliff. Um, that was, that was pretty impactful when Spider-Man died. That was pretty powerful. Did you, when, when, when he killed Gamora, did you kind of feel like she should have seen that coming? Uh, no, because, because when she, when, when the Red Skull, which I didn't see coming that the Red Skull would be there. (laughs) Um, not played by Hugo Weaving this time. It wasn't. No. Oh. No, Hugo Weaving said a while back, he was like, I will not put on that mask again. It's too See, uncomfortable. I heard him, I heard him, or I read an interview like that where he said he wasn't going to do it, but... It, yeah, they it, got somebody else who sounded similar. Oh, okay. Oh, that's a shame. That makes me sad. Because he was, he was great as the Red Skull. Um, so then, uh, what was your question? Should Gamora have seen it coming? Uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, well, when... When the Red Skull tells Thanos that you have to sacrifice someone you love, and she's like, "Ha, huh, you don't love anyone but yourself," and he turns around and he's crying, and then he grabs her by the arm in the slow motion throw off the cliff. Um, I mean, what was she gonna do? There was nowhere for her to go. There's nothing that she could do. Yeah, but I mean, it seemed like, and then, and then it once, seemed like she was surprised that he was like, oh, wait, you're going to sacrifice me? Like when when not Hugo Weaving says, hey, he's not crying for himself. Yeah. Like, well, I, I guess I had a hard time with the idea that she was genuinely surprised there. Because if I was her, as soon as he was like, you got to sacrifice something you love, I'd be like, shit, I'm getting out of here. Right. Well, she tries to kill herself with the knife, but he turns it into bubbles. That's true. I, I guess, you know, it's it's like, I guess there's like 10 or 15 seconds that pass, but I was surprised that she was surprised. Yeah. Well, that's um, a lot of moving pieces. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. What, what are their elements? The, um, there? the other thing that I, that I really liked was at the very end when um, Thanos is like walking towards Vision and uh, mm-hmm. and he's like just taking out the Avengers one by one, and Captain America is standing his ground, and he like he does that sh- that shot where he's like holding his arms and he's like straining with everything he has. Captain yeah. America, Captain America is giving everything he possibly has to try and stop this creature from getting past him, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Thanos is gonna is going to overpower you, and no matter. Did- Go ahead. And no matter what you do, like it's over. Did, did you get a sense there that Thanos was like, like for a half second, kind of surprised though by like Captain America's strength? Um, maybe for a minute, like he didn't expect that much strength in one human, but like, but like then he uses his other arm. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you in terms of like it's not going to stop it. Yeah. Um, the, um. And I feel like that that sort of thing would happen too if if it was like. If Hulk was trying to punch Captain America, I feel like Hulk would still win that. Um, but I, 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 I had kind of read on Thanos's face that for a second he was kind of like, "Oh, what's this?" You know, like this guy can. Right. Oh, interesting. The other, you know, and I, and I, the way I read that, I thought that was kind of cool. The um, the other thing I really liked was how they show how powerful Thanos is. Is like right away in the movie where he beats the crap out of the Hulk. Yeah. Yeah, and that's actually more effective than I would have expected it to be. Like, if you were to tell me before the movie, they're going to show you how strong Thanos is by having him beat the Hulk. I I wouldn't have been, I would have been like, all right, you know, and I mean, I just saw Hulk and Thor fight. So I'm like, yeah, okay, a lot of powerful people. But it did work better. Maybe maybe because at first Hulk is punching him. And then he's like, "All right, well, I'm gonna play now." Yeah. You know, rather than just letting you do this. Yeah. The one, the one Thanos guys like let him have his fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's one other part that I wanted to talk about, but it's it's jumped out of my mind. Uh, it'll come back to me. Um. Well, <laughs> okay. So you st- you stuck around for the after credit scene, right? Yeah. I get that. 
Samuel Jackson or whatever his name is, Nick Fury is sending a page <laughs> yeah. to yeah to um Captain Marvel. Yeah. I how's that sit with you? Um well they got to set up the next movie, you know. I, yeah. I don't know when the Captain Marvel movie comes out next year, like if it comes out before or after. I think it comes out before and takes place in the 90s. Oh, really? Yeah, I think That's it's like a cool. we're going to do her origin story so that when she comes into this sequel, you know who she is. Oh, that's kind of cool. Well, and I, I, I feel like that is trying to do something that this doesn't sit great with me, which is like, hey, all your favorite characters just died, Here's- except for Arrow Guy and... Who else was missing from this one? There was someone. Oh, Ant Man. Yeah. Um, all, all, all your favorite characters. There's well, a sp- half of your favorite characters died, and instead of having them be saved by the favorite characters you have who are left, we're going to introduce some ex machina new character. That it's just I don't know something about that feels yeah dumb. Uh, I mean, but it's very comic booky. Like that's that's how it would happen in a comic book. Like you'd have. See, I think that's what bugs me about comic books sometimes, though. Like when when I'm reading like a a Batman story that's taking place in Gotham, and stuff's getting way out of hand, and I'm like, how will Batman get out of this? And then Superman shows up. I'm like, damn it! <laughs> I wanted to see Batman solve this difficult problem that's before him, right? Without some sort of cheat. Yeah. And and that's a little bit what this feels like to to me. To me, I'm like. I mean, I don't mind finding out about Captain Marvel. Oh, God, I've been introduced to all these characters. I didn't think I'd care that much about Black Panther, and he's awesome. Yeah. Um, Iron Man, even. I mean, back when that was a thing, I was like, who's Iron Man? I don't really know anything about Iron Man. Right. And I loved it. So so I, I'm not against that. Just I would really like to see the folks who just lost all their friends have to figure things out on their own. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. Um but it'll be it'll be interesting to see where they go from from here. Like uh, like like you said earlier, by the end of the next Avengers movie, everything will be back to normal. Yeah, you know, like we all know, Spider Man has another movie. We all know Black Panther's got another movie coming. Yeah, you know, so how are they going to? And it's going to be a question of how do they bring these people back. Mm-hmm. Well, how do you think that's going to happen? Uh, I don't know. I know it's know. just speculative, but I'm curious. Yeah, I really don't know. I, I imagine it's going to have something to do with, um, you remember how Di- Doctor Strange was looking into the future? Yeah. And he's like, how many of the, the 14 million realities no, did we win? Ways. Did we win? And he's like, mm-hmm. one. Maybe he's, he's doing the, uh, uh, this is the reality where we win, but you have to, in order to win, you have to let Thanos win first well yeah i think that's sort of like in that moment when he said oh there's only one way then i was like well then that's the way it's gonna go because originally and so when he said with tony stark he's like it had to be this way or something along those lines i was like yeah Yeah. okay so it's going according to plan oh when when tony stark got stabbed too that was unexpected like i thought iron man was gonna bleed out on the on the battlefield there that was pretty powerful too I, I thought he was going to die, and uh, I was kind of looking forward to the drama of that. Uh-huh. Um, and and I was enjoying Doctor Strange more than Tony Stark, so I, I would have preferred it that way. But um, but then it, Doctor Strange is like, no, this is the way it needs to go, and that, which is a huge change from what Doctor Strange says earlier, where he's like, if it comes down to saving your life or the kid's life, I'm protecting the stone. Right, and right, then, and then he ends up giving up the stone. Yeah, which makes me think that Doctor Strange knows what's going to happen because of the right. the time stone. Yeah, but yeah, you know how do well, and because he doesn't go through all those fourteen million scenarios until after he's already made that claim. Right, exactly. Um, but but when he says that, when he's like, "Yeah, it has to go this way," I'm like, "That that that's weird," <laughs> because that kind of suggests. Tony Stark, I mean, I don't know if it's limited to, to this, but it seems almost like it's like, no, you have to be the one. Tony Stark has to be alive 
for this to work. Right. And I'm like, well, that's weird because Tony Stark's a guy in a machine. And Doctor Strange has the superpowers. <laughs> so right. of the two of them, if it's like, no, 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 you need to live. I need to die. Because at some point, you're going to need to punch him. Yeah. <laughs> like, that, that's, the, the, there's going to have to be, I think what I'm saying is there's going to have to be a really good reason that Tony Stark needs to be the one there rather than Doctor Strange right. to make something happen. And the only two people left alive on that planet are Nebula and Tony Stark. Every, yeah, that's Everybody true. else from the Guardians is dead. Spider-Man's dead. Doctor Strange is dead. So uh, I'm really interested to see how they how they wrap things up. You know, but uh, I, I I am if it's good. Yeah, if they do it well, and I guess after this movie, I'm I'm inclined to. You know, I've heard you say before that you have a lot of faith in Marvel at this point, and I guess now I've never had faith in them, but I guess now I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt and go, okay, I'll, I I I could see that they could do something really well. Yeah. So so I'm I'm willing to I'm willing to go into the next movie with my expectations more neutral than low. Right. Well, that's good. Yeah. I guess. Although going in with low expectations sometimes is the, is, is the best. Cause that's <laughs> what I went in with wonder woman and came out thinking it was the greatest movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so listeners, uh, if you want to hear Nick and Matt, uh, go crazy on how great wonder woman is, uh, go back to episode whatever that was. Yeah, because it's there. Yeah, uh, I stand by most of my comments. Uh, I do too, but it definitely wasn't the best movie of the year. <laughs> uh, it's, it doesn't get the Oscar. No, uh, that like, we gave it. <laughs> like uh, I definitely we were we were kind to that movie, and I think we were kind to it based on on the kind of performances that we that it got, not from the, what kind of a movie it was. Yeah, well, and and just like the. I know we used the word a hundred times in the podcast, but the charm. Yeah. You know, that, that movie just, it's like oozing with charm. Yeah. Her and Chris, uh, Pine were great together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is, which is ridiculous, which is how the movie ends. Like you have these two characters that have such chemistry, spoiler alert for wonder woman. And then they, they kill him, they kill him off. (laughs) <laughs> well you know i mean that was also taking place during world war one yeah so he would have been dead oh yeah by... yeah yeah but they could have they could have had more mo- more movies that take place in the past like true like 1920s adventures or something you know yeah they, they didn't some more espionage stuff. they didn't have to kill him off it's, it's <laughs> such a waste uh i don't mind that they did and and i feel like had justice league been better you know and that moment between her and batman where they're arguing about letting go of the past and stuff like that i uh i feel like you know that that could have been a seed that was worth planting had it been a little better yeah later <laughs> you know <laughs> but but i also wouldn't mind the idea of like a hundred year old chris pine <laughs> like, in age makeup and she's still like doting on him well that's what they do in captain america Oh, yeah, that's true. I guess they wouldn't do that because it's already been done. She died, though, right? She dies in Civil War, yeah. Right. But just like as an old lady. Yeah. Um, The other thing is, here, let me ask you this question. Uh, because the sure. comparison between the two movies is inevitable. What did Darkseid want in, the, or um, Steppenwolf want in the Justice League movie? What did he want? What did he want, yeah. He wanted the mother boxes. What? Why? Oh, I don't know. Because <laughs> they're good decoration or something. Uh. And then what did Thanos want? He wanted the infinity gems so that he could destroy half the human or half of the world universe races uh, in order to maintain some sort of balance. Yeah. I mean, crystal clear motivation on what that one character wants. Yeah. And then yeah. in Justice League, you're like, I don't know, to get to the next action sequence. He he wants to be a bad guy. Yeah. That's that's his goal. He is just going, Hey, I want to twirl my mustache. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh what a what a waste Justice League is and what a treat the Avengers are. I I hate to say it, 
because I, I love DC so much more than Marvel in comic book form, but you are correct. Yeah. I agree with you a hundred percent. Um, well, and, and for as long as I've hated on the Avengers, I also, I got to, you know, what, what is it? Eat, eat a bit of crow or something like that. Eat to, crow, to, yeah. Yeah. I don't understand like, no. that phrase at all. Is a crow like not a food you can eat? Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe it just tastes kind of icky. Hmm. And, and the taste of saying that I really like the Avengers is a little icky <laughs> in my mouth. So, <laughs> so maybe that's it. Um, so, so, okay. So coming back to like things that are coming up then just like movies that are you're excited for or not excited, like you, previews before the Avengers, uh-huh. if, if you don't mind moving on. Uh, well, I got there kind of late. Um, so I didn't really see the previews. I mean, Deadpool comes out later this month. I'm pretty excited about that. That looks that looks pretty funny. I I'm looking forward to going, but I think part of it's that my girlfriend enjoys Deadpool a lot. Uh-huh. Um, and I did enjoy the first one, but like so far in the previews, I haven't seen anything that's made me laugh yet. Oh really? I've I've, I've had quite a few things. There's okay. there's the one moment where Cable's saying something dark and deadpool's like oh so dark are you sure you're not in the dc universe and then yeah and then there's that kind of funny there's that other part where cable shooting deadpool from like point blank range and deadpool swinging his swords and all the bullets get through he's like your bullets are really fast but that's also a nod to um the x-men origins movie where he was like super fast with his his sword hand yeah <laughs> he was just walking through there wiggling his wrists yeah with cgi swords he was like, Your um, bullets are so fast yeah that's true that was kind of funny and that, so I, I i'm 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 hesitant but i'm definitely gonna go see it and i'm hoping i'm hoping that it's entertaining yeah that's a, um, i'm just hoping for a lot of tongue-in-cheek if it's as good as the first one um i'd be happy Oh hell yeah, yeah! If I if I enjoyed as much as the first one, I I that's that will be exceeding my expectations yeah. by far. Um, what else is coming out this summer? Yeah, there's stuff like that. I felt like in the previous it was like June, July, like each one. Uh, we got the next Jurassic World coming out. Yeah, I'll see that. <laughs> yeah, I'll see it. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely be there i mean i'm not I, gonna not see jurassic <laughs> park yeah i will have paid for a ticket <laughs> um i this did you see the preview the new preview oh there's a new new one no i haven't seen it yeah the one before um infinity war was uh a little bit it, it explains more like it looks like people are trying to take the dinosaurs off the island and they're going back to rescue Blue, the Velociraptor, uh-huh. and and then uh, and then they find out, oh, these dinosaurs aren't being removed from the island for whatever purpose we think they were originally. They're being removed from the island. I don't know to make another park or something. No. Uh, but they're also doing genetic stuff, and so isn't this the plot I don't know from how- the Lost World? It's the plot from the, I guess, a cross between the Lost World and Jurassic World because then it's like, oh no, they made a new mutated dinosaur. Hmm. And so it's like the Indominus Rex looking thing. Like it's another version of that. Yeah. But it's taking place. I was, I almost said on land. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, on, I guess in a city because it like keeps creeping into this girl's bedroom. So there's some little girl that you're gonna have to follow around a lot, uh, and does for she some reason, gymnastics. I don't know yet. <laughs> we'll see. Um, that might be the moment that I do walk out of a movie. <laughs> uh, but it's like sneaking around. Like I think there are like three shots of it creeping up on her in her bedroom. And I'm like, I can't imagine a plot where there's you know like a dinosaur is like, yeah, I've really got. A, I really want to eat that one child. Yeah. You know. Um, so so I don't know. And then of course Jeff Goldblum, Goldblum, they're like, hey, look, he's in this. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay, well, I can look forward to that. Yeah. So that's coming out. Um, what else is coming out? There's, there's got to be a couple more things, right? I think I saw another another advertisement for, I almost said Spawn, um, Venom. Oh yeah, that looks so, terrible. But we've, yeah, we've touched on that already. Yeah. 
Um, See, I haven't seen a clip where they actually show Venom, so I'll, I'll have to check that out. On yeah, look it up. It's it's definitely better than the first trailer for Venom, but it's still it still just looks terrible. Do, do you feel like Tom Hardy being on something gives it some credibility? A little bit, but also it's Tom Hardy with his face covered up, so that means it could be great. <laughs> okay. Every movie so, where Tom Hardy covers his face is pretty good. So okay, so so we got the fact that he's in it, and then the fact that his face is covered up. Uh, that, I guess that should outweigh a bad preview. I guess. Oh yeah, different. There was a different preview for that Han Solo movie. Oh yeah, and that made the movie actually look watchable. Yeah, the first, watchable. The first trailer for that movie looked just terrible. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that comes out. Like in three weeks, there's a Star Wars movie coming out in like two or three weeks, and I really almost couldn't care. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, I'll agree with you that the the preview made it look watchable, and that was about it. Yeah, like the the first preview was just like him saying, "Hey, I'm cool," and then this preview was like, "Hey, by the way, this movie might also have a plot." Yeah. I saw someone redid the first trailer on on YouTube. Somebody redid the first trailer with Beastie Boys Sabotage playing with it. And I was like <laughs> and I was like, "Wow, this looks like a kick-ass movie rather than the music that they chose before." And uh, all they really did was just overlay the song Sabotage. And I was like, "Wow, this movie looks kick-ass." <laughs> well, I think I think that just goes to show that if you do play Sabotage, you can make anything. Right, yeah. Good. Yeah. I'd like to see the Mrs. Doubtfire trailer redone with Sabotage. <laughs> maybe I'll maybe I'll put that together. Have you ever seen the Please Mrs. do. Have you ever seen Mrs. Doubtfire um the trailer as a horror movie? As a horror movie? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, that works pretty well. Well, I know there were a couple others, but I, I can't remember them right now. But it was like Boom, 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 like June, July, October. Oh, yeah, there's another Harry Potter movie coming out. Oh, yeah, I never uh, even saw the other one, the Fantastic Beasts and Where to uh, Find Them. I totally just skipped that. You aren't missing out on much there. Honestly, it's like the the chubby guy and his kind of girlfriend are charming. Yeah, but it's pretty bad when you're watching a movie about fantasy and wizards and stuff, and you're going, hey, the romantic B-plot is the highlight of this movie. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, would, yeah I, wouldn't, I can't give a recommend on that one. Yeah. Um, All right. This one uh, this will have uh, Dumbledore in it, so I guess. Dumbledore? Uh, yeah. That's from the Lego movie. That's from what? The Le- <laughs> it's from the Lego movie where Dumbledore and Gandalf are talking to each other. Oh, I haven't seen that in a while. Oh, uh, it's funny. Let's see it again. Anyway. Dumbledore, Dumbledore, Dumbledore. It cracks me. Uh, <laughs> Let me do it again. Dumbledore. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, Matt. Well, I think that's going to be our time for this week. Cool. Um, thanks for catching up. My pleasure. Um, we'll try and be we'll try and be a little more uh, consistent with episodes going forward. Cool. Uh, keep watching to our, movies. To our listeners out there, yeah, keep watching movies. And and listeners at home, if there's ever a movie you want us to watch, let us let us know, and we'll and we'll try and do that. Oh yeah, it's, it's float a terrible one our way. Yeah, that's true. Do that. We'll do a commentary. We'll we'll, we'll watch it together. There we go. Um, Matt, anything to plug? Um, actually, you know what? I will. I don't know if it's exactly a plug, but um, for those of you out there who are fans of A Perfect Circle, um, you know oh, the yeah. side project from Maynard James Keenan. They came out with a new album uh, a week and a half ago, I guess, and. Uh, it's it's a little weird at first, but uh, every time I listen to it, I like it more. Um, the lyrics are a little bit more uh, on the nose, a little less subtle than usual. It's clearly a very political album, uh, and I'd say give it a couple listens. You'll probably like it. Okay. What, do you know what the name of the album is? Oh, yeah. Sorry. It's called Eat the Elephant. Eat the Elephant. Okay. 
Um, and I'd say check out thisweekinfilm.com, but I haven't updated the website in a while. So, you know, if you want to know what was going on at like week 58 of the podcast, <laughs> be, be sure to go there. But if you follow us on the social media stuff, we're, we barely have a presence there. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, uh, if that's going to be the end of the reel, I guess we'll see you next week in film. Bye. Bye.